Emre. I want you to see some noise. That's not for. That's really good. That is also a plan from Ghana. And they've come to also support Auntie Benedicta. So I will be going around asking people to tell me how they knew Jeffrey or how they know. I know there's lots of people who have come to support Joe. They know Joe. So Joe's family and friends, where are you? Joe's family and friends, let's get That's right. So we've got Joe's family and friends here. We've got Jeffrey's friends from football, both in uh, Boston, Lincolnshire, and also from Hemel Hempstead. It's great to see all of you here. If I haven't mentioned your group, it's not an oversight. I'm still going to go around just to gather some more intelligence so we know the diversity of people who have come to pay their respect uh, to Jeffrey and also to support Uncle Benedicta and Uncle Jake as they um, mourn their son. Mr. Amu, the Afe in our bar, give him our karma. Graham Park Estate for Auntie Benedicta Edamwasi. Asuna for Auntie Benedicta Edamwasi. And um, Tenao Nyema Auntie Benedicta Azui, Jumamana, all the way in Ghana, Kumasiya Edamwasi. I know some people have said they knew Auntie Benedicta and her siblings back in Kumasi in uh, um, all those years. And we're very happy that you could all make it. Pastor Frank. Pastor Frank. The drinks already. Someone who's already started drinking already, but I'm going to officially bless this food. Um, before I do, if I can get everyone's attention, before I do, can I ask if you can stand? Please stand for a minute. I'll ask that our elders to be seated, but those of you can stand, please stand for a minute as we just observe a few seconds of um, silence and reflection for Jeffrey. Amen. Please, if everyone can thank you, if we can all just um, observe this time. I believe that it's been a good day. It's been a peaceful day, all things considering, and um, Jeffrey will be well pleased. And uh, on behalf of the whole family, I just want to thank everybody for coming to support. Um, it's a wonderful to see everyone here, and I know um, it will touch Jeffrey's heart. So if you could just have a brief moment of silence. And I'll pray and then we can continue with the fellowship. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you first and foremost for bringing us to and through this day where we, the family and friends of our dear beloved Jeffrey, have laid his body to his final resting place. On a day like this, we thank you for the strength, peace, courage, and comfort that you have given to all of us, especially to the family and to the close loved ones of Jeffrey. And Father, I pray that in the days, weeks, months, and even years to come, that you continue to give us this same strength, 
courage, comfort, peace, and even joy upon every fault, memory, and remembrance of Jeffrey. May it roll over and overcome the spirit of grief. May our weeping be turned into laughter, our mourning into dancing, and our sorrow into joy. And now we thank you for this time and moment of fellowship and celebration of Jeffrey's life. Thank you for the hands that have contributed, every hand that has prepared, and the hands that are going to serve the food and drinks. And we thank you, Father, that we will partake it and it will do us good and no harm. May this room be filled with laughter and joy and pleasant memories of Jeffrey as he would want as we celebrate and honor his life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Is Ryan here? Can I ask Ryan to come to the front, please? Ryan. If there are more than one Ryan, or there is more than one Ryan, then I'm sure Ryan knows who the Ryan is. Thank you all for coming. Firstly to the church. For those of you who were, were able to make it to the cemetery, thank you. And also thanks for coming to the reception. We're here to remember our, our brother, our friend, our colleague,
more time. So in the Jeffrey from football in Lincolnshire, what's it? Can I hear some boys from that?
is called Moyaya. If you're trying to find it, you can find it on uh, YouTube. But the words, the words, it says we are going. Can you know where we are going? We will know um, where we, when we're there and how we will get there. But my favourite line, the one that pulls, makes me pause and think, is heaven knows how we'll get there. But we know the road will be muddy and rough. It will be hard, we know. And, but we will get there somehow. And the person who wrote it is Auntie Benedict's husband, Osibisa. Unfortunately, he is unwell, so he couldn't be here uh, today, but he's watching us online. To Mr. Osibisa, maybe I will be a uh, thank you for this beautiful song. And um, we want the words to be inspiration for Joe and her daughter and also for Amanda and uh, her son. Uh, thank you. Now I would like to invite somebody from the Boston group, Lincolnshire, to come and share with us a few words about Jeffrey. Much, if you don't mind, can I ask you please to come, also known as Paul Atkin. Paul, the clutch of brand, I say that please come and share with us some thoughts, some memories about um, Jeffrey. Can we put our hands together for Madge as he comes uh, here? I don't know if Madge and his crew agree with Jeffrey being 
a fan of uh, Liverpool FC. But let's hear from him. He tell us how they knew Jeffrey, how far back they go, and also um, some stories that we don't know. And then after him, I would like to also invite uh, a rep from the Hebrew Hempstead group. I've been told Duncan Miller might be able to speak for us. Is Duncan here? Can I see Duncan's hand? Uh, so, amazing. So, um, much. There you go. Uh, please tell us about Jeff, how you knew him, and even how he managed to make it to your 60th birthday in 2022. Let's put our hands together for him once again. Hello, everybody. Um, Jeff moved to Boston quite a few years ago, and I used to run a local football team, and we heard about this club called Jeff Mentor, who's supposed to be a bit special. So after a couple of weeks of trying to sign him, I actually met him. And I just remember the, the game at Wrangell, the tricks he could do. He, he had so much balance, and as soon as you met him, you just loved the boy. He used to come round my house on Sunday roasts, actually. And then, obviously, I lost contact with him a little bit. He moved back down south. And then me and the wife had a surprise 60th. And he turned up, and he stopped at Stacey's house. And had this sad news of his passing. Then, um, obviously, a lot of you knew Jeff a lot better than what I did. And he just touched your presence. And to see it's all his family, his children here, and it's a pleasure to come and meet a lot of lovely people. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you much representing uh, the team all the way from Lincolnshire, Boston. They've come to also pay their respect. Um, I know the group from Hemel Hempstead will speak. Oh, Duncan, yes, amazing. So I've got Duncan here who will speak. Duncan Miller, right? Amazing. Um, can you tell us a bit more about Jeffrey, how you knew him and what he was like? So, yeah. I met Jeff in 2010. Um, when he walked into my office and I thought, I know that bloke, he drinks in a white heart. He walks around playing football, well, predominantly moaning at referees. But, yeah, he walked into my office and I thought, I know that bloke, he's from Hemel. Obviously when I asked him, he said he was from London. But, we knew him from Hemel and what I wanted to do today is, I mean, I can't top that special dance in the big time. But, I wanted to take, I didn't know him as long as many of you. But I did watch him and take, go through some really proud moments of his life. So I thought I'd take you through four or five proud moments for Jeff. The first one being on his part, you know, his passing his driving test. I mean, we didn't think it was that special because he was 35. <laughs> but it was a really proud moment for him getting his first car. His first big special moment was generally the birth of his son, Caleb. I've never, you know when you have a friend and there's something you, if you have a real friend, you've got to have respect for them. The way he raised his son, Caden, before I had my son was an example to me. And the way he took him out to do training and show, showed him the value of practice and working hard. I think all the men that are here today should have a responsibility to carry that on for Caden. I also watched him work really, really hard. So he started as a business development rep and as he worked through the company, he found a passion for software and a passion for supporting people, helping people with problems with our software. And he grew it, he started to grow a team and he started to get a, a passion for this software and for helping clients solve problems. We then parted ways for a little while and he went on to build, in that area, a fantastic team. And every time I spoke to him, they gave him more people who he helped develop, he helped grow, they give him new problems to solve and he got to show that whilst he was always charismatic and personal, he was really clever and if you ever got Jeff to concentrate on doing something, he'd be the best at it, really that. It wasn't often you could get him to concentrate on it long enough, but he would definitely, when he was there, he'd be excellent. The next time we didn't see each other as much, we didn't work together, um, and he brought Joe, it was four years ago in December, it was our celebrated the same birthday and Joe came along to celebrate with me. And he came along and said, who's this new chick? And he said, well, she's a one. Uh, and I said, really? He said, yeah, trust me, 
And then he proceeded to tell me a little bit about what he liked about her, but mostly about how good a cooking she was, and then he made this, and he made it that. And as a man who liked to take time to cook himself, maybe a little bit too much time, but it was definitely a big compliment indeed. Next came his house. I don't know if anybody went to Jeff's house, but it was always open. He was proud. He did his mother proud. There was always food. There was always drinks. And he genuinely always was so special to share it with family and friends. And then finally, you know, the big one was his princess, Amaro. And so, again, the responsibility lays on all of us to help her remember what a special man her dad was. And the lasting memory for me, for Jeff, was this man was all about family. I've, he puts every he puts me to shame in how he treated his mother, how he talked about his brothers and sisters, how he showed dedication and trust towards his family, how he showed respect to the mother of his child, and they had such a great relationship as they talked about even high five and they sit together today, which is amazing. And everybody who was his friend felt like his family. So even though we all waited for Jeff, and sometimes heard that I've just got a big mile up in London, take to Northampton, I'll be there in about five minutes. <laughs> you know, he often was late, but one thing he never did to anyone was leave them or not come through in the end. So, Jeff, I hope we all celebrate you today. Thank you. Wasn't that beautiful? Um, I will invite JC Lee to also share a few words. And this is the second football team in Hemel Hempstead. But before JC, JC is here, amazing. Just before JC comes, we'll ask you to speak to this word here. I personally didn't know Jeffrey, but I knew his mum and I know his mum. And I am a radio host and I believe every Sunday and to Benedict, I never misses my show. In fact, when one of his sisters went and took her to go and live with them for a bit, you know, was grieving for Jeffrey, she said she had to go home to get her radio because she didn't want to miss uh, my show. And so I thought, if we're here today, I'd love to come and MC for the reception. But one thing I've learned as I've been walking about, talking to people, learning about stories from people, is the legacy people leave are behind. So sometimes you go to a funeral, like you come, you may not have known Jeffrey directly, but then you look around and see the reaction. And that's what tells you the story of what the person was like. So I've been told that as a baby, when we were all born as babies, we had to cry, right? And everybody around us had to smile. You know, um, if you give birth to a child and you don't cry, then something could be really wrong, right? So when you come on earth, or if you come to this world, as you live your life, live it such that when you die, you will be the one smiling and everybody around you is crying and grieving for you. And I think we're all doing that in one way or the other because of the person Jeffrey was and the legacy he's left behind. So it's great to hear all of these stories about Jeffrey, and I also I think it gives us a chance to think about the stories we want to be told about us when we're not here one day. So thank you on behalf of the family for coming. Jason, are you ready to share with us a few words? Also from Hemel Hempstead, the other football team. Thank you. Um, um, my bit of brief history and how we came to meet Jeff. Um, 2007, we restarted a football team, a bunch of 36 year olds, I'm now 54, so I was one of these older guys that were coming out of so-called so -called semi retirement to get together and see if we could do something and win a trophy or somewhere along the line. And there's two or three of the other guys here, Bradley and Gary, same kind of age as me, and we all used to play against each other and stuff. So we restarted this football team, we come runners up in the cup and the league in our first year, second year. We got to a cup quarter final and um, we were a little bit short of players that day. And Matt Shrimpson, where are you, Matt? Are you here? Matt? There he is. Okay. Matt said, I've got someone who can play for us today. A chap called Jeff. So I said, okay, fantastic. We're short of numbers. Someone to fill a spot. We'll get 11 out on the pitch. We played 4 5 1 that day. 
So, one striker, five in midfield. Wax Jeff up top, this guy that we thought could play a little bit. Absolutely outstanding. We were away from home against a really good opposite, to uh, opposite team called Hadley. We weren't expected to win. We won 2 0. He was absolutely superb. Uh, we went on that year to, to win a cup, come runners up in the league, and gradually the 36 year old buggers like myself and Brad Lippy and people like that, we fell by the wayside. Younger guys came in, and Jeff was the consistent bit of glue in that club that kept it going from a bunch of old guys to a really successful football team in Hell Hempstead where Saturdays. I then got involved with the Sunday team called AFC Boars. Jeff came along. Uh, with me from the Saturday side and a few others. Robin's out here, there's lots, lots of other guys, I can't name them all. But we went on to a superb success on a Sunday. Jeff helped us win two county cups in succession. Absolutely fantastic guy. Again, the glue in that Sunday team as it went through a lot of change. Um, it was just a dream. Um, going back to one of the things that's been mentioned many times today though, his timekeeping. Many was a morning that we'd be there, half 10 kickoff. where's Jeff? We played at Groveville playing fields. He used to live in a flat about sort of 200, 300 yards away from the pitch and you'd be looking through the trees. <laughs> is, that, is, is that Jeff? No, Jason, it's some fucker walking his dog. <laughs> and it was just a common theme. And there'd be, there'd be times where we only had 11, sorry, only had 10 waiting for Jeff to make up the 11. We'd be playing all sorts of games to delay the game with the referee. It just was a, a, a comedy of errors. Then Jeff would come strolling over, Nigel's life. Are you bothered about being late, Jeff? No, not really, Jay. How are you, mate? You know, that kind of thing. Just, just, just an absolute fun guy. We were, some of his stories we've been talking about today, um, just that he was everybody's friend. You know, I was talking to Gary earlier, and we were saying about he was the sort of guy that if you brought your kid along, or your missus along to the game, once, he would connect with that person and make a, a mini friendship. And then Gary said to me, when he got the sad news, he mentioned to his wife, and she said, I know Jeff. I don't even know that story when I came to the party. He's a lovely chap. But that kind of thing is very, very rare, I think. And there's probably 10, 20,000 stories like that that we're never going to get to hear about. But we know that they happen. We know that they're out there. The, the mark that the man has left on so many people's lives is just huge. And none of us guys would ever, ever forget him. It was the glue that held both their football teams together. Um, I also want to mention my brother Ryan for a second because he collected him on a Sunday morning for about five years. And he actually said to me, he said, if it wasn't for Jeff being Jeff, I would never have hung around outside that flat for so many hours over those years. So I'm sorry to waffle on so much. Um, thank you for listening. Um, just a wonderful man. And, and we're all going to miss him greatly, and we will never, ever forget the man who left a mark on all of our lives. So thank you, and have the best possible day. Thank you. Thank you. May we be seated, please. Can everyone say, rest in peace, Jeffrey? Rest in peace, Jeffrey. Rest in peace, Jeffrey. Rest in peace, Jeffrey. Thank you all. 
Um, I know his work colleagues are here and I didn't get a chance to speak to you guys earlier on to see who can say a few words about him but I'm just wondering if amongst his work colleagues is there anybody who will be willing to say a few words about Jeff? Amazing. Uh, let's put our hands together for our sister as she uh, comes to take the mic. In the church, as the eulogy was read, what stood out for me is this line, a kind and caring soul with a heart of gold. He spoke proudly about his family, his friends and his work, and also his Ghanaian heritage, and of course, Liverpool FC. That was uh, the Jeff. Um, oh, come, please come. So that was Jeff. I also heard that he used to take his mark to all her medical appointments. Can you imagine? That was the kind of person he was. So, um, okay, we've got Jessica and Gary from work who will share with us a few words about Jeffrey. Can we put our hands together for them? <laughs> Who'd like to go first? Gary. So, yeah, I've had the pleasure of working with Jeff for nearly eight years now, and it's definitely been an experience. Um, for a large period of that, I've been his manager, and um, he was the man that you could never stay mad at for any more than a second because the smile just basically won over all of us. There are loads of stories about Jeff, and Jeff will share a few of them. The most recent one that really set everything. For me, that we needed to know about Jeff was we met a customer around four months ago, and there was an interesting guy there talking to Jeff for just over an hour about nuclear bunkers and how they were buried around the country. And Jeff actually managed to stay interested for the entire hour and asked actually really relevant questions as I was hiding further and further away from the same table. And he had this habit of making everyone feel like they were the most important person in the room. And we have 40 customers of staff from work here today. And we've closed the office and that is just a tribute to how much of an impact he had on absolutely everyone we work with. So, yeah, he's an amazing guy and I hand over to him. Hi, I'm sorry, Larry hasn't finished yet, but I think the noise, he's competing with the law of noise. So if you're in, the, in that area, can I please ask you to observe some silence, please, as we hear Gary speak. Because if you talk and Gary has got a soft voice like mine, uh, we're not going to hear. So Gary, sorry to have paused. <laughs> Let's go for it. Please be silent. Thank you. Before I hand over for those that know me, I've never had a soft voice in my life before, so this is probably the first time for that. So. Hi, I'm Jessica, uh, one of Jeff's colleagues. Um, as Gary said, there's about 40 of us here and we've all worked with him for a long time, but I think it's also a testament that we've got employees that haven't been here so long, um, but they are here to pay their respects today. Um, everyone knew Jeff, we've got offices in the UK and in Ireland, um, and when he passed, it didn't just hit the UK office, but the guys overseas as well. It was felt throughout the whole business. Um, and as Gary said, that's why we're all here today. Um, a couple of people have echoed his timekeeping wasn't, wasn't quite the best, but everyone uh, forgave him for it. Um, I think a lot of us in the office will always remember him for taking lunch, but the rest of us took lunch between 1 and 2. Jeff would take lunch at 3pm, uh, which was always funny. You could hear his Tupperware going, all the food that Joe had made. <laughs> um, he'd always share stories about the family, um, myself and a couple of us here. Uh, Helen, Steve, and Whitten, we'd always uh, work late, John, um, and we'd always hear the alarm. I definitely remember the alarm at six o'clock uh, to call his mum, um, and that was just a testament to who he was. So we'll always remember Jeff. Um, he's a massive mentor. A lot of his team are here today. He headed up the support team, um, and again, I know on behalf of the team that were devastated, he wasn't just a manager, he was most definitely a friend. Um, and for myself, he was kind of my, my brother at work. He'd always shout, are you all right, sis? Um, and that I will, I will always miss. Um, so on behalf of us all at Intact, we refer to ourselves as the Intact family. And that's really what we were. He was a family member to us, not just a colleague. Um, and when you see someone at work, you don't see their outside life. But it's really lovely to see everyone and hear and put faces to the people that he used to talk about. 
Um, and it's great to know that he wasn't different. You know, all the stories that everyone's sharing has the same thing as he was just Jeff through and through in work, in football, or in life. So thank you for letting us, uh, you know, uh, celebrate his life with you today. And uh, condolences and love to all the family and friends. Thank you, Marie and Jessica, for sharing some insights about who Jack was uh, at work as well. Thank you all. I know that it's a big space, but there are a few of us here. And we're very, very grateful that you could all come. Um, if you're looking for somewhere to sit and you just don't want to stand, just let me know and I can go around and see where there are gaps and then I can invite you to sit at a table. So just in case you're also a group, you knew Jeff and you want to say a few words about him, just let me know, put your hand up, I'll come round to you, maybe not now, but think about it, and let me know. Also over there is a, a gift or donation box. In our Ghanaian or African culture or tradition, normally when you go to such event, you want to pay your respect. So people will give money, monetary donations, and if you've got such gift or such donation, if you give it to the gentleman at that table, uh, he will take your number and also record the amount and then Auntie Benedicta and the family will reach out to you to say thank you. Also, if you come as a group and you want to make a donation in the name of the group, let me know. We'll take the money, we'll record it and also we'll reach out to say thank you. How many of us know Joe? Do we know who Joe is? No, everyone. Do we know who Joe is? Can I invite you to come and stand next to me, please? And then Kayla, do we know Kayla? Yeah. Right. So Joe um, is the wife of our late brother Jeff. So Joe wants to say a few words. In fact, I didn't know Joe before today, but I've heard beautiful stories about her. At least I know about her cooking, which is great. And then Kayla is from Joe Jeff's son. And so they've got a few words they want to say. I know Joe's uh, friends and family are here to support us. So can I ask you all to stand if you're here to support Joe? I will be your friend of mine. So Joe, can you run and look at the number of people who have come to support you? Isn't that beautiful? So if any of you to come and stand next to Joe as she speaks to us about her late husband, you're welcome to come and stand next to Joe. So we'll hear from Joe. Um, Daddy, Mommy, Sisters, Brothers, please come and support her as she shares a few words. And then Kayla will also speak afterwards. Thank you. Auntie Benedicta, mother-in-law, will also come and stand next to Joe. So Joe, I'll give you the mic. I know it's very, very difficult, but know that we're all with you and this isn't something we want to even wish on our worst enemy, but it's happening and we just have to pray to God for strength to navigate this situation. So let's all be silent completely out of respect, and then please sit down um, unless you just want to stand as you read. But if you can be quiet for us at this um, most important time, then I'll be very grateful. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you all for coming and being here today to say goodbye to for all the love and support given to Jeff's family and I over the last devastating few weeks. Most of you will remember Jeff for being late, being loud, always smiling, being funny, enthusiastic, respectful, and always available for a chat, especially if the conversation was centered around Liverpool. I will remember Jeff for being lovely, I will remember Jeff for being loving, caring, devoted, loyal, and the messiest person I've ever lived with. <laughs> Jeff was determined. He wanted to be good at everything he did, and he usually was. In recent years, he took up playing golf. This started as team building at work with the incentive that the top players got a trip to Ireland to play. Of course, Jeff booked himself lessons and sure enough went to Ireland every year to play in the Ryder Cup, now renamed the Jeff Mensah Memorial Cup.
Jeff's team have described him as not just a colleague, but a friend. Some of them have said, if you couldn't hear his voice, you could hear his laugh. If you couldn't hear his laugh, you could hear his keys. He was described at work as always putting his team first and being very welcoming. Jeff was an open book. He told people what he thought and he was always there for advice, whether you asked for it or not. Because of this, he told people he loved them. With Jeff, these weren't just words. You felt the love, especially when he wrapped his arms around you. When I first met Jeff, how close he also was to his mum, and we joked when we had a mare that I'd moved even further down the pecking order. <laughs> the truth is, Jeff didn't really have a pecking order. Everyone that he gave time to in his life was so important to him, and he to them. Jeff was a very proud and devoted father. He supported Caelan in all he did but was over the moon when Caelan started showing interest in football. Jeff quickly went out and bought all the gear, and if Caelan didn't have training with his club, Jeff had him at the park with cones and parachutes. Jeff proudly told everyone how he delivered Amare into the world. She has been a daddy's girl ever since, hooking her legs around him if I went to take her. He was secretly excited when I went back to work and had to work some weekends. I knew they'd be having fun on daddy daycare days, even if it did mean her having lunch at 4pm. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's WhatsApp status read, I'm big out here. And he really was. We were each other's future. <laughs> Most of the things we planned, I can't do without him but I will keep the promises we make to each other and make sure his memory lives on with the children with the help of all of you. Now please grab a brandy and raise a glass to Jeff, the man who did it his way and we loved him for it. Somebody show him the loo for me. Um, <laughs> Caitlin was meant to speak next, but he needs to go to the toilet first, he says. Bless him. Yeah, I can imagine. He's doing really, really well. So, as Joe says, let's raise our glasses. I've got water in mine, so whatever you've got, if it's brandy, as Joe says, and let's raise it to and toast it to Jeff's memory. To Jeff. May he rest in peace. Dance for us, Joe. If it's all right, we'll invite you and your family to just do a bit of a dance, just like mommy did at the beginning. To become a chum, and one more bit of what Joe or family help Joe to just um, do a dance for us. DJ, um, can you give us a song? I just wonder whether we need to wait for Kaylan to come. Um, don't know how long you will be. Okay, so actually we wait for Caelan to come and after his words we'll invite Joe, Amanda, Caelan, Joe's family and whoever is here to help her do a dance. In the meantime, is there anybody else who wants to say a few words? Are you Joe's dad? Okay, um, um, can you say a few words for us then please? Yeah, good afternoon um, everybody. I'm Steve, Steve Whitmarsh, Hannah's dad who delivered the um, bid in prayers. So Jeff <clears throat> was a lucky person because he had Joe in his life. But it wasn't easy for Jeff to have Joe in his life because he had to pass a lot of vetting <laughs> from Joe's group of friends who were 10 in total. And to pass their 
vetting and get a seal of approval was not easy. Um, so I knew once he'd overcome that hurdle, he must be the right guy, but I'd never met him. When I did meet him, it took me about 30 seconds to realise he was the right guy because he didn't want to talk about himself, he wanted to talk about me. Now, that's a pretty heavy clue in the first 30 seconds of somebody's character. Um, his big hero was John Barnes, and uh, I was privileged to help Jeff on a journey to see John Barnes at Watford Football Club, and his passion and excitement as an adult about meeting John Barnes told me everything I needed to know about his football love. Um, today, uh, I'm a Portsmouth season ticket holder. Jeff was a big Liverpool fan, so I'm wearing a Liverpool badge today and a Portsmouth badge, uh, really to honour my friendship with Jeff, which was based around football, but was also heavily based around Joe. Joe's been a part of our family, if I can say that, since he was this high. And my daughter, Hannah, has been a part of Steve and Helen's family since that high. So we've all known each other a long time, and I can honestly say, Jeff had to pass a vetting test with me as well, and I would never have chosen anybody else to be with Joe and Jeff. Thank you for listening. Wasn't that beautiful? Thank you, Steve. He's so touching in that as well. So we've got the young man here, Kanan, and um, he's got a few words to say. So let's, let's, let's give him a hand on the floor. Kanan. Hello, everyone. for coming today. Um, so, Today's not the best day, and everyone here knew my dad. He was the greatest, funniest human to be on his own. Some of you were really close to him, and it's heartbreaking, but we all had, all had some great memories, and so you hold them tight and never let them go. He's very, very brave of the young man. I was trying to find out how old he is. He's nine. He will soon be ten. He will hit double digits soon. And to know that you, you're here talking about your dad in this space is heartbreaking. But also very, very brave of him. So uh, thank you, Joe and Amanda, for doing this. Can we um, have a song so that friends uh, of Joe and family can come and also do a dance um, for us. Thank you. And then I've asked for songs for the various football teams. So when Joe and family finishes, um, I will invite the Lincoln Boston group first to also come and do a dance, and then we'll go to the other group. So um, Joe and Amanda and the kids and friends and family will do a dance for us now. Thank you.
I'm going to get you some merch in the next one to watch it again. But I'm different from Lincoln, Boston, Lincolnshire. Or Boston in Lincolnshire. Where are you? The football group. Where match? Come from. Oh, um, they disappeared on me. Alright, can I have the Camel Hampstead football group then? Camel Hampstead. Or oh, anyone who knows or knew Jeff from football. Alright then, um, I've got another person here who wants to share with us some insights about Jeff. So Princess Park, right? Princess Park Youth Academy. Um, let's hear from him and then afterwards we'll invite anyone who knew Jeff from football, whether Hebel Hempstead or Lincolnshire, to the dance floor. Thank you. Good evening everyone. Good afternoon, I should say, sorry. Uh, first of all, I'd like to send my condolences to the family. Um, Jeffrey was larger than life and hearing all of these football stories, uh, I felt I had to come up and say something. Uh, I met Jeffrey when uh, I was uh, pretty much Caden's age, uh, nine years old, we joined a football club called Princess Park. And I was fortunate enough uh, to play in that academy with him for six years. And I, I know there's a few boys from uh, Watling here tonight. Well, that was unfortunate that you chose them and not us. But um, there was only ever one team. We were brought up to uh, enjoy our football, play hard and win. And uh, I, I think he showed how many of the, uh, the Watling boys, including Romero, uh, came over to join us at Prince's Park. Uh, because it, it truly was a fantastic football club. And, and hearing a lot of the stories about how Geoffrey turned out as an adult, uh, I think it was instilled into us, not just Geoffrey, but myself and the other boys that played at Prince's Park uh, from a very young age. And we've all taken that into adulthood. So a couple of stories about our time in football together. Well, I remember um, my 10th birthday at the club, and uh, this shows how long ago it was because uh, my present for my birthday was a Sony Walkman. And uh, I came out of the dressing room and my mum said to me, you know, Chris, where's your Sony Walkman? I had no idea where it was. About 30 seconds later, Jeffrey popped out. He had the headphones on, he had the Walkman in his hand. And uh, he went, yeah, I just found it in the dressing room. Well, it was in my bag, but you know, that's Jeffrey for you. A couple of other stories and uh, I'll, I'll try and keep them as clean as possible, but as, as we got older, um, Prince's Park every year we would go away uh, to, to Holland to play in some European tournaments. And uh, the Europeans were a bit more liberal than the, the English was, and I think, I think me and Geoffrey was about 15 at the time, and we found out that they had a sauna that was unisex. And not only was it unisex, but you had to go in with no clothes on as well. So. Uh, me and Jeffrey we convinced ourselves, we, we geared ourselves up and we said, yeah, come on, there's going to be women in there. Janet at the back convinced me and Jeffrey that they were going to measure us before we went in. And that wasn't our height that they were going to measure, but Janet convinced us, so that me and Jeffrey again psyched ourselves up, walked into the sauna to find about six 80-year-old fat men in there. So uh, we quickly picked our towels back up and walked straight back out. Another, another one of the stories, and this doesn't, but it sort of does directly involve Jeffrey. but as we got older we played for a number of other teams together. And uh, where's Sammy? Sammy around? There he is. Jeffrey recruited Sammy into the team as well, and that, that was where he was actually playing for Barney. And uh, the, the game was taught off at the last end. We was always taught to play hard, win, and then enjoy yourself afterwards. And, and, uh, we would always get battered after football games when we enjoyed it. The first team's game was called off, so we had no game. Went to watch the reserves, didn't we, Sam? Sammy said he wanted to join in with us, me and Jeffrey showing your cousin, and we said, you know, we've got a bit of experience, but if you want to, if you want to join in with us, you're more than welcome. And after spending an hour in the dressing room, we went out to watch the reserves. The ball went down the line. One look, the next one look, Sammy hit the deck. Absolutely passed out. The referee stopped the game, came running over. Jeffrey's got hold of Sammy. 
And the ref said, do I need to call an ambulance? And Jeff just looked at him and went, no, the boys just twisted. So that, that was it, it was going back on. It doesn't seem right that Jeffrey's not here. I, I still keep expecting to see that door open and see him walk in and his, his smile beaming. He was a massive part of our lives. He actually lived with me for a period of time well, so I, I felt very fortunate to uh, enjoy that time with him. But like I said, those days when we were nine years old to 16 years old at Prince's Park, it shaped us all to what we've become as men. Jeffrey, I'm gonna miss you. I really am gonna miss you. And uh, you know, like I said at the start, condolences to the family. Last thing is, um, Everyone, like I said, knows Jeffrey, knows his love for football. And we've already discussed as a group that later on this year, we will be running a football tournament in Jeffrey's memory and uh, to hopefully raise some money for, uh, for his children as well. So there'll be news going around with that. Anyone that knew Jeffrey from football, make sure you get in touch. We're going to try and make it an enjoyable day where we all have fun. So I know he wouldn't want us to get together at football and not enjoy ourselves. That's what football was about. So please get in touch and let's, uh, let's hopefully raise some money for his children. But listen, God bless Jeffrey. Good night. See you soon, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so he uh, represented Queen's Park and the whole growing up from children to adults. And it is rather unfortunate that Jeffrey isn't here today. But we can actually hear this beautiful story. See you later. Benedicta, as in Jeff's mum and her siblings, and shortly I will also invite them to say a few words to encourage Auntie Benedicta and also do a dance for us. But for now, we'll hear from from Sam. Can we put our hands together for Sam? Just so we're still here. Right? Amazing. So Sam, we're listening to you. Um, so Jeff yesterday and I thought a few words I had to kind of say just to share with you my thoughts on that. So it goes, yeah, Jeffrey and Jamal Mesa. What can I say about Jeffrey? Born two months prematurely on the 19th of November 1978. A father, a son, a brother, and a friend to many, and an uncle. He was quite simply one of the most charismatic people you'll ever meet. My first memory of Geoffrey was at about four years old at Blessed Dominic School. I remember a kid that had everyone around him laughing and captivated by everything he said. He would tell a joke and you would think you knew how the joke would end, but there would be a twist that you never saw coming and that would have everyone in stitches. Then there was football. I first started to appreciate the local fame of Jeffrey when playing football with a group of friends at the park and kids after the game were talking about how good Jeffrey was. Kids I knew who had no idea who Jeffrey even was were raving about how good he was. Then there's that all important moment in a young boy and girl's life and they have to pick a football team to support. We didn't necessarily pick a football team, but we picked a player. I remember discussing with Jeffrey players like David Rowe, Castle at Arsenal, Chris Ward at Spurs, and to be fair, they were good players. But when we saw John Barnes, all bets were off. We, he was hands down better than everyone that we ever saw 
and it was his team who chose to support. Then there's a personal side to Jeffrey. I remember us playing with cars and him picking up the car and going through with me um, systematically different parts of the car. He would say, this is the wheel sound. I'd repeat it. I'd say, wheel. This is the door sound. I'd repeat it, doors. Um, and he, and and what, 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 I guess what that, that shows is that the, the time it took for wanting you to learn whatever it was he was teaching you. So, be it from keeping up to date with the latest music to sporting the latest fashion trends, Jeffrey did it effortlessly. It was almost as if he glided through life. He glided through life stylishly. I lost count. I lost count of the number of times I asked my mum to buy me something just because Jeffrey had it. Jeffrey bought a new top. Mum, buy me a new top. Jeffrey bought me bought a new pair of trainers. Mum, I need those pair of trainers. Just because Jeffrey had them. Uh, try as I might to match you at football or on the Super Nintendo when playing games such as Mario Kart and Super Tennis. I soon realised there was only one Jeffrey Mensah. You simply learned to appreciate what a remarkable human being he was. So despite the fact that you used to tell me that you were taller than my dad when, he, when you were 10 years old, <laughs> all the fact you put s curl in my hair, you turned my hair straight, <laughs> all the fact that when you told me you had a sister, Anita, and I told you to introduce me to her, and you disapproved, despite my impeccable character, I forgive you. <laughs> On a serious note, you've left a void in my life I can't even begin to describe. You established such a beautiful family who will all miss you dearly. Joe, Amanda, Kaylin, Amari, and the most amazing people anyone could ever have in their lives. And you have my word, I'll do everything to support them and your beautiful mother. And as for the Liverpool Football Club, well, we're still steamrolling every team in our way. Top of the league! We're still top of the league. Yeah. <laughs> We're still by far the best country this this by the far the best team this country has ever seen. Rest in peace, my brother. Thank you, Jeffrey. Alright, oh, wasn't that beautiful? That's Sam. He said, the year. That's how we say rest in peace in tree. Everybody say, the year. The year. The year. Amazing. Apart from, it's usually young people, it's to say, have you heard it to say? Yeah, before. Yeah. It's to say, it's how are you in tree? Yeah, because everything is fine. I don't think you hear it before, so I know you are. Be rusty. <laughs> So I'm just saying that I don't think everything is cool today, but it is cool. Now the song we've requested for everyone who knew um, Jeff in football is You Never Walk Alone, right? Amazing. So as the DJ plays that song, I'm going to throw it out to you, whether that is from Boston in Lincolnshire, or Hemel Hempstead, or Princess Park. Amazing. Um, just please get to the dance floor and dance, and afterwards we'll go to the Ghanaian side and hear from people who also know how to benedict and have come to lend their support. Thank you. So, so you never walk alone? Let's hear it. Please feel free. And get to the dance floor for us. Thank you.
at the end of the storm There's a golden sky And the sweet silver song of the What a touching attribute you never walk alone. And this is a message for Joan and uh, uh, Amara, right? And the daughter and for Kayla and Amanda. And also to all the uh, football friends, family, brothers and sisters from football, I never walk alone. And I like uh, what uh, Princess Park said that they're going to start. Um, a trust, you know. So if you want to contribute towards the trust to support just children, then uh, please see our brother in the corner. You have to get his name again so that you uh, can also link up and do what you can do in the football world to support um, um, our late brother Jeffrey's uh, children. Now um, let's hear from Auntie Benedictus' friends. I have a group. Um, who lived with um, Auntie Benedicta for years and their kids are playing together. So, Ohima, Teresa, can I please invite you to come and share a few words. Let's put our hands together for our mother. She and her friends have come to support Jeffrey's mum. I'm not sure if she will speak tree or English or fancy, but um, we will hear from her. And then the song they want to listen to as a tribute to Jeffrey's Candle in the Wind by Sir Elton. Yeah, Candle in the Wind by Elton John. Yeah. Uh, if you said Candle in the Light, but um, to find that song, it's Candle in the Wind. Okay, so we'll put our hands together once again for Ohima Teresa. And if she says it, if she can say, I'll translate it in English, and she might just speak in English. Not sure. Auntie, um, Teresa, can you betray? Hello, my name is Teresa, and I've been living with Phil. Guys, can I ask you humbly to keep the noise down for us so we can hear you? You're doing very, very well. I'm really grateful for the silence you've maintained throughout because I know it's hard. Some of us we haven't met or seen each other for a very, very long time. Um, but we need to hear from everyone clearly. So um, we'll ask Auntie Teresa shortly to say a few words for her. Thank you, everybody. Uh, as the scripture says, a friend far away 
is better than Sister Nyeri. This reflects the kind of life uh, Jeffrey lived with his friends in Graham Park. To see so many friends of, uh, of Jeffrey, I can't believe it. I've got to know Benedict since 1995 in Graham Park. Our children went to school together, socialized together, and the mothers became friends and sisters as well. Jeffrey was so good. He was a lovely son to have. He was so respectable, respectful, very kind, above all his kindness and his counseling. Our children, to see them here, those I haven't seen for ages, they are here today to support Jeffrey's family. All you want to say to the family is that, Mr. Benita, we all love Jeffrey, but God knows that God loves him so much better than us. That's why he has taken him away from you so soon. Jeffrey, you won't say much, but all you are saying is farewell. Go home peacefully and rest in God's blessing. Thank you very much. All right, so um, it's not so like a dancing song, but it's a reflecting piece. So, um, aren't you like us to listen to the words, the lyrics of Candle in the Wind uh, as we um, mourn and also celebrate the life of my late brother, Jeffrey?
Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Alright. Alright, ready to go.
so I'm personally here on behalf of my sisters. As we all grew up together with Benedicta Ukumase Ashati Muta. Her home was our home and my home was the home too. Fortunately, when she arrived in London, a year later, I followed her. And then we are, on behalf as well of Ashina Bushia, you were one of the best members. If you, are, if you belong to a clan, whether you attend meeting or whether you left, you are still a clan member. So if we are, you know, it's not very well. As she spoke to you, was not able to come. Some of the sisters and brothers of Ashley Bushia were able to come to the church, but you know, most of them have grown a bit old, so they all went home. And to my sister, we are here. We supported you when, when our son passed away, and we are still with you. We are telling to you that may God continue to strengthen you, to comfort you, and as we say in our current program, a child is born for the village. So your son is a son too. So may God continue to walk with you, to journey with you, and above all, to give you strength to walk on. We are saying to Jeffrey that may God receive him in his bosom, and may God protect you and all the family. So, say goodbye, Jeffrey, our son, Jeffrey, our grandson, too. The year, the year, the year. Thank Amen. you, and may God bless you. Amen. 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 I'm drunk now, I'm not. I'm in the CCTV. 
Jeffrey Metz's life. Wait, take the
Let me show you the way. Bad man from a dope play games. Bad man now I'm out on a race. I don't like them look off the way when I ride no boy. You can't get me. I'm being big, nobody don't get me. JJ's been cruising the next three. I call back to my dog, try and get me. Sleep to the road. I go up road. I bang bang when I still can't go. I play close, I fence on the road, do you know? I ain't bang on the road, but I'm sorry. Excuse me, sorry. But you give me what I want, I'm a party. GG, you're the Southside Barbies. Rip cars, then match up, they're on these. Big four, four. Long time, I'm not going to be there. Bang bang, call me, you're ready for the house. Sing GJ, you're the one to be there. Bang bang, 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 you're the one to be there.
Sebastian Cabranca from Mother Mitchell. We got a 